Hi, welcome to the next training session of SAP FICU module. Today we'll be continuing the asset accounting part where we'll be doing asset under construction today. Normal assets which uh, has been taken care in the normal course of business has already been done until the last training session. So asset under construction, this is a special form of tangible assets. What is it? How we deal with it? We'll discuss today and what are the different business processes as well. We'll go through it. So an asset under construction is a temporary asset and will not depreciate. It will be distributed and settled when the assets has been completed and will be capitalized to the final asset. To explore more on it, Asset under construction, which is also known as AUC assets, are a special form of tangible assets in SAP. They are usually dis displayed as a separate balance sheet item and therefore require a separate account determination and their own asset class. So if you remember, when we did the configuration step, we created an asset class for an asset under construction. And even we created the rest of the configuration steps as per the asset class for that. So we'll be revisiting to that configuration step steps when we will be doing the asset under construction. So during the construction phase of an asset, there are different kind of an expenditures or expenses are being incurred on any asset. And we don't know what will be the actual cost of the asset when it will be completed. So what we do is we book all the actual postings to this AUC asset. Once the asset is complete, a transfer is made to the final fixed assets. Just take for an example, we can take a scenario that suppose IBM is building, is constructing a building and building will have a lot of different materials involved, costing involved, and a lot, a lot of cost are incurred. So there are different processing facilities are built up. So all these costs and expenses, material cost, labor cost, direct, indirect costings, all these are booked on a single asset over a period of time till that particular building construction is completed and the building is ready for the usage. So the, these all expenses which have been incurred on a particular single asset, that kind of an asset is termed as a special asset class known as AUC that is asset under construction which act as a temporary holding asset which holds all your values in that particular temporary asset account during the construction where no depreciation is charged because as per the law depreciation should be charged when that particular asset is put to use but yet over here that particular asset is in the construction phase so there cannot be any depreciation on that so as said when the asset is complete we transfer the whole value to the appropriate asset class as in the case when the building is constructed completely that as the value of the building will be transferred to the building asset account under the head building asset class and once the building is transferred to its respective category then from there onwards the depreciation will start on that particular building asset so one thing is very much clear that till the asset under construction phase that particular asset is there will not be any depreciation on it so this is a temporary till the construction or the uh, the asset gets completed now asset under construction is also known as with the name CWIP. CWIP means constructed work in progress or even some uh, say that WIP asset. 
So that means work in progress assets. So asset under construction has its own asset class. Asset under construction have to be shown separately as a balance sheet item when we prepare the financial statements because this is not a part of any of the other asset classes. So in this asset under construction, if there are different construction or different kind of uh, assets have been building up or manufactured, constructed, they are taken over here in one particular respective asset numbers or asset masters. So after an asset that has been classified as an asset under construction has been completed, that must be transferred to a valid asset category so that it can be subsequently depreciated as per the use of that particular asset. Now, the value can be transferred to one particular asset or even it can be transferred to multiple asset as well. For example, I would be constructing and maybe I am constructing two buildings in one go. So in that case, I will be dividing those costs accordingly and will be transferring the final value to two different building account or two different building asset accounts. So these facilities are there as you want to transfer. You can transfer the 100% to one particular asset or you can transfer the part of it to the particular asset depends as per the requirement of the business. Now exploring more on it, when we transfer the value, the transfer from asset under construction to a fixed asset can be handled in two ways. One is termed as asset under construction without line item management and the second is asset under construction with line item management. Do remember these two types of transfers. We will get back to this when we will be revisiting the configurations for asset under construction which we have done in the configuration part of asset accounting. So normally in the industry asset under construction with line item management is preferred and has been used where you select your different cost and you transfer those costs to the final asset. So in FIAA component that is financial accounting, asset accounting component, you can accumulate the cost under purely one technical asset in asset under construction and later on we create a fixed asset to which it will be transferred and we transfer the value on the basis of which type you want to follow. So we will be following the asset under construction with line item management. So when we will be moving on to the line item management part, the system activates open management, open item management when an asset under construction is created. If you set the corresponding indicator in the asset class, in addition, you have to assign a settlement profile to the, as, to the company code involved in the customization of asset accounting in order for the line item settlement to work. Probably you will not be understanding my words as of now for this particular part. So we'll be looking this in the configuration when and it will give you a clarity how this line item settlement is done. So now moving on to the next part that is how we transfer the value. Whatever we discussed is the overview of asset under construction, what is asset under construction, how it has been used and finally the values are transferred to the fixed asset to which asset category it refers to. Now how we transfer the value as said we transfer the value with asset under construction with line item management. So when we go for line item management settlement there are two options we have to go for. We first need to create the distribution rule. So when we create the distribution rule, the line item settlement is carried out by using the distribution rules. And the distribution rule 
in that you can define that you want to transfer the whole 100% of the value from this to the final asset or a part of it or a certain percentage of it. So the distribution rules are asset specific. The distribution rules consist of a distribution key and a receiver in which the value will be received later on. So let's uh, go for or before going we can discuss this first and then we can visit the system. Now once you define the distribution rules how the distribution will be done to the final asset then we go for the receiver where the asset has been transferred or capitalized to the final fixed asset. In addition it is also settled to the general ledger account. So when we transfer the value from AUC to the final asset, the value gets transferred to the general ledger account as well and it updates our financial statements too. Is the diagram over here. This diagram suggests that uh, this particular asset under construction require its own asset class and even in that the depreciation key which has to be taken is 0000, 0, 0, 0 as the depreciation is not calculated for the asset under construction assets in the depreciation area. They are posted to the balance sheet with the actual amount. So, as said, the asset under construction have to be shown separately in the balance sheet items. Even you can make down payment or post down payment on asset under construction if you enter the transaction type group 15. So, there are options of down payment over here as you can see on the screen. The down payment can also be made for the asset under construction part. And even when an asset under construction part is completed, then that particular asset can be capitalized with the help of line item management or capital investment measure as well. So that is what asset under construction can be managed for summary settlement or by line item. In case of summary management, the entire expenses incurred on the AUC are transferred once or several times to the assets in the completed tangible fixed asset at the time of completion of the asset. Whereas in the line item when asset under construction are managed by the line item you can enter the settlement rules for every line item assigned to the AUC asset. And then the asset value get transferred to the to the concerned category of the fixed asset class. So now moving up to the next now over here is that first the process of AUC now is as on your screen but before revisiting to this particular AUC process steps we first will be revisiting the configuration steps for AUC assets however those steps have already been covered in the in the couple of uh, uh, sessions back when we when we did the asset class creation or defining the asset class part so over here we need an AUC asset class to be defined so as to execute the asset under construction process. So we'll first need to check the asset class. So for that we need to go to the SPRO. We need to go to SAP reference IMG. So you, so you can refer to this particular path for asset class this is what we need to revisit for asset under construction. So we need to define an asset under construction asset class for the company code. So moving to this particular path we need to go to the financial accounting new and then we need to go to the asset class. In asset class we need to go to the organization and the structure and that you need to go to the asset classes over here. And you can check back over here the asset class if defined or not. 
So the different asset classes which we defined earlier were in between this to this. So this 18,000 over here is the asset class which we have to use. So we can see the settings or the customization in it. Double click on this particular class. So once you double click it takes you to the next path over here and you can see now that the account determination and the screen layout is already defined over here. And if you remember I said that you need to select this line item settlement over here on the screen for AUC assets. So this is a must for it. So once you have done this step is okay no problem in that. Now the next thing we need to check is the GL assignment. So we need to go and we need to check this 1800 as an account determination whether the GL has been assigned to these particular account determination or not. So we'll move back to the path and now we need to go to integration with general ledger accounting that is what if you remember the path over here we did earlier so in that we need to go to first create the GL and then we need to assign the GL over here so let's check whether the GL has been assigned or not so we can need to go to this particular path assign GL account so we need to put the chart of depreciation so it is what is assigned over here 1010 and then we will be selecting our own chart of account and we need to go to double click on the account determination and in that we need to select your asset under construction account determination that is this 1800 once you have selected this you need to go to this balance sheet and you have to double click on it so once you double click on it you can say that you can see over here that the GL has not yet been assigned uh, over here so we can move up and we can search the GL if it has been created we can assign it or else we need to go and we need to first create an asset and then only we can assign it over here so let's move and check whether this particular asset has been GL has been created or not so we can move up over here machinery building land so in that you can see that the asset under construction is there so this is the GL which we need to assign in the asset under construction part and once you have assigned this GL then we can move and we can save this screen because we don't need any loss or gain or sale of asset because AUC asset are never been sold or retired because ultimately these have been transferred to the final assets which will be capitalized later on. So we can save this screen over here now and this customization will be saved in the request number. So that means we have done the settings for this. Now we can move to the main part over here. So now we can move up to the AUC process where now we'll be covering these below points for the AUC business transactions to be done. So first we need to create an asset master. Then we need to go for a down payment request for AUC asset and after that we'll be posting a down payment and then we'll be going for a posting closing invoice that is a vendor invoice from whom we have purchased the asset. Then we will move for the settlement rule of AUC assets. So first a rule has been defined then we will move to the AUC settlement and then we'll check the values of the assets in the asset explorer. So let's move on to the first part that is creating asset master onto the screen. So we can take a new screen over here for this. So we can move on to this particular screen and we can execute the transaction AS01. So to create the AS01 now we need to select the asset class. So I want an AUC asset to be created. So I need to select the asset class which is AUC asset. Enter. So you can see over here on your screen that the asset class over here is okay I think I've taken the wrong company code so the company code we need is 1010 
that is why it's been showing the wrong detail so mind it you need to take the current company code over here and then you need to go to the asset class and you can now go for the search option so you can see over here your company code 1010 and then we can go for the search options so in that you can find So we can see the asset class over here, 18,000 asset under construction. We'll select that asset class from over here. So we have selected the company code, the asset class, and now we can enter on the screen and it will take us to the next screen for creating the asset master. So this transaction is used to transfer the cost of an asset from asset under construction category to a newly constructed uh, newly created asset in a valid asset class. So right now we'll be creating only an as AUC asset where we can write it over here as CWIP building and then you can put the details if you want to put it over here you can put the cost business area or if you want you can put the cost center as well or else you can leave it blank and we, then we can move to the depreciation area over here so we not need to change anything over here the depreciation key will remain zero over here on the screen for AUC assets mind it the AUC asset or CWIP asset is never put depreciation on that because these are not put to use these are basically under the construction period so now once you have put this detail general data then the time dependent and then the depreciation area we can move and save this entry over here and your AUC asset class has been defined you can see the number over here so now we can move and we can do certain transactions in that particular in this particular head and then we'll move how this particular value can be transferred so let's move and do certain more transactions like FDS 9090 You can put the date, whatever date you want to take it as. Even you can take a prior year date as well. Uh, probably the prior year date system will not allow you. So we can take an early date. So what is it? We can take the vendor over here. So we can select over here the vendor. So you can see on the first screen we have taken the document date, document type KR, company code 1010, then the posting date also and the period and the currency over here. Once you have taken all these details, we can move downward to the posting key. Over here we need to take the posting key as 31 for so as to credit the vendor and we have selected the vendor over here. Once you have taken this, you can click on to the enter option on the keyboard. So again, you can enter on the screen. So it will take you to the next screen. You have to put enter for a subsequent number of times. So now you can take the amount over here. Suppose I have purchased certain material for the construction of the building of $40,000. So I have taken that over here and then we can move on to the next. We can take the asset over here. So the 7070 posting key will be used for debiting the asset and for that again we need to go to search for the asset which is we just created as a WIP building so you can see over here this is the asset which we have just created so we'll be doing all the transactions now in this particular building until the building is constructed so we'll post certain expenses in this particular head and then we'll see how that can be transferred to a, an another screen so moving on to the next part you can select this asset now we have taken we will move to the transaction type over here so the transaction type which needs to be taken up over here is so we'll select the transaction type over here if you remember whenever you purchase any asset you need to take the transaction type doesn't matter that is a normal asset or 
uh, 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 AUC asset. So the transaction type which will be taken up over here is 100, that is external asset acquisition. So double click and select it over here. Then again you can enter on the screen. Okay, it says it already closed. Okay, so probably the, peer, the year it's not been allowing to post. So we need to go back again and post the transaction again. Slash M-90. So let's take up on a certain nearer date. Uh, we can take it at April 1st. Enter. We can take the amount over here now. And then we can take the posting key again. And we have selected the asset. Now we'll take the transaction type over here as 100. Then we can enter on the screen and we will take you to the next. Over here, we need to select the amount over here on the screen. Once the amount has been selected, you can you can write the text over here. Raw material purchased for building construction so once you have done that you can move on and simulate this particular transaction over here enter so once we simulate you can see the transaction entry has been reflected to as a preview and you can post this particular transaction over here on the screen so this is how you can post you can purchase some of the raw material on this particular asset part now moving on to the screen we have created the asset master. Now we'll move to the second part that is a down payment request for AUC asset. So down payments for asset under construction are fixed asset acquisition that have to be capitalized and reported as a separate item on the balance sheet. For this reason, the down payment postings use separate special transaction type and are posted to a separate account in the system. So the prerequisite to have a down payment request created that the transaction type for down payments must be permitted in the, in the customization for the asset under construction class. First, create an asset master. So the asset master we have already created for WIP building. Once you have created the asset master, then we can move up to the following transactions. That is, we need to create a down payment request. Once a down payment request will be created, then only a down payment can be processed to that particular vendor. That is the third point over here. And once a down payment has been made to the vendor, now the vendor will supply that particular material to that for the construction of the building. And once he supplies, he will also supply with the invoices of the, of the material or whatever the goods he would be supplying for the construction of the building. So the invoice will be posted also over here. So posting the corresponding closing invoice for the tangible assets. And once that has been done, we will be clearing the down payment with the closing invoice. So these four steps over here, second, third, fourth and fifth are linked to each other. So these transactions can be carried out with the integration with as accounts payable accounting. So moving on to th these particular steps now, first we'll be processing a down payment request. So we'll move to the transaction F-47. Slash in F-47. Enter. Okay. So we can move over here. We can take the date. So the date suppose I take is as, as on April 1st. Similarly, I can take the date over here. Now I need to select the account that is the vendor account in this case. So the vendor account I can go and I can search the option with F4 key. So enter and from this screen suppose I take this particular vendor over here and once I have taken the vendor I can move to the transaction special general ledger account and over here I need to select the transaction over here I would be selecting is suppose M 
the down payment tangible assets. So once I have selected this, now I can enter on the screen. So now we can take the amount over here. Suppose I am making an advance payment of $50,000 and we can take the due date over here. Suppose the due date is 36-2014. Okay. That is June 30th, 2014. Now you can put the text over here as well. Advance payment request for building material. So you can write the detail over here. So once that has been done, you can move and you can save the screen over here and your request will be generated. So you can see over here now, enter. And you can see a document number has been generated. That means a request has been generated. So the down payment request is posted and the down payment request did not result in a posting of an asset, mind it. So first we have created a down payment request. Now we'll move to make a down payment to the customer, to the vendor, sorry. So we'll move to the next transaction that is down payment, that is F-48. So we'll move to F-48 now. Enter. So in this again, we need to take the document date. So suppose I take the same document date that the same document, same day the request is generated and the same day the payment is made to the vendor. So you need to select the vendor. Then you need to select the special gel indicator over here. So the special gel indicator will be M as we selected in the earlier screen. So the same special gel indicator will be taken up over here. And now we'll be selecting the bank so as to process the advance payment to the vendor. Okay, so you can search for a bank. Okay, seems we have to search manually now. So let's search it once again. F4. Enter. So from this you need to search the bank. So you can see over here a number of banks are there. So suppose I select this bank over here, checks out. And over here you can select the business area. F4. So we can select the business area, suppose we take 001 as the business area over here. Now we need to select the amount over here for the down payment that is $50,000. Now the another part we need, need to do is we are processing this, this, this down payment on the basis of a down payment request. So whenever a down payment request is created while making the down payment to the vendor that request must be selected. So to select that request we first need to go to this request over here on the screen and the header on your screen so you can see over here the request is coming up you can click on to this enter so it says that uh, an entry in the business area is not permitted so we need to take off the business area okay now we can again click on to the request and you can see over here the request number is this which we have just created a while back so we can select this request number over here and once the request number is selected now we can move up to simulate the document over here. So once you simulate you can see the transaction over here has been defined to you. This is the preview of the document where the vendor will be made a payment of $50,000 and your bank will be credited with 50, sorry subtracted or debited with $50,000 from the bank account. So once this is okay you can go and you can post this document and your down payment is done. So you can see the document number has been generated over here on the screen and now we can move to the next step and that is to post the closing invoice. So now we can go and we can post a vendor invoice for purchase of assets. 
So again, for this particular down payment, the asset has not yet been affected yet. So now moving up to the next, that is F-9090. Now in this step, we'll post the acquisition from purchase with vendor. So suppose I am purchasing the asset now on April 15th, 2014 and you need to select the document date, document type, company code, then the posting date and your currency as USD. Over here the posting key will be again 31 and now we'll be selecting the vendor over here. So the vendor either you can select it from over here if you remember the, trans the vendor code or else you can go and search with the F4 option and you can take the vendor from there. But you must take care that the vendor is the same to whom the advance has been made and from that you have been purchasing that particular asset. So you can enter on the screen now. Again enter. So it has been taken you to the next screen and over here you can select your $50,000 over here. Suppose I have made the 100% as an advance to that particular vendor and the vendor uh, will be supplying the goods and now the invoice will be punched with the 100% of the advance payment that is $50,000. So moving up over here now we'll be taking the next line item. In the next line item we need to select the posting key as 7070 for the asset. The asset which we created with 18 as the initial. This was the CWIP asset which we created. So for debiting the asset, we need the posting key 7070. And even we need to take the transaction type as 100 over here. So now after that, you can again enter on the screen so as to proceed to the next screen. Again, you can select the amount. So once you have selected the amount, now we can move to the simulate option over here. So as to have a preview of the document and enter on the screen. So you can see this particular document has been generated now. So an asset line item has been defined over here to you if you see over here on the screen. This is the asset line item which has been defined with the transaction type 100 in the asset under construction part. So now you can go and you can post a document over here. So a document number has been generated to you on the footnote and now if you want to go and see the document the asset number that the AUC building asset we can go to the transaction AW01N and we, we can check the value in the asset as well. So this is it CWIP building this was the asset number and there are two transactions one is $40,000 which has been purchased and another is for $50,000. Both the transactions we have posted, $50,000 we have just posted and $40,000 we have posted uh, just at the beginning of uh, the session. So you can see a total asset of $90,000 are there in your asset explorer that is the asset register in that particular asset master. So once this has been done, now we'll move to the next that is clearing the down payment with F-54. So for clearing the down payment now, we need to go to the transacts in F-54. And here you need to select the document date. So suppose I take the document date of 15th of April. And then you need to select the document type as KA, the company code again the posting date then the currency and now over here you can move up and you can select the invoice over here so you have to put the invoice document number and then we can move to this process down payment so with this transaction we can clear a down payment manually or have the payment program clear it you can clear manually at any time no special measures are needed for this transaction. When you enter an invoice, the system use, you issues a warning message that there is an outstanding down payment. In doing so, the system indicates that a down payment commitment exists. 
you can then decide immediately whether or not to clear the down payment. So in case you want to go and clear the down payment, this is the transaction code for clearing the vendor down payment against the invoice. So now we can go to the process of down payment. Enter. So it takes you to the next line item over here and you can select this this particular request over here and once you have selected the request now you can move to the simulate option so as to simulate the transaction so you can see over here the transaction has been simulated but you can see the second line is highlighted why we need to go to this double click on this line item and so we need to put the text over here so you can put the text and now we can move back again to the simulate option so there is no simulate option over here right now we can directly go and post a transaction so you can see the document has been posted over here the document 1700001 was posted in the company code so if you want to check now the vendor ledger account even we can go and we can see the vendor ledger FBL1N you can select the vendor over here So this was the first vendor with which we have did the transactions. You need to select the normal item and the special GL transactions. And now we can move to this all items over here and click on it. So you can see over here this was the document which we have just cleared. And this was the description over there on that. So this was the document which we have cleared amongst each other in the system. So once we have cleared the invoice against the down payment, now we'll move to the next step that is settlement rule for AUC assets. So the functionality for this particular step is an asset that you produce in-house has two stages in its life that are relevant for accounting from the point of view of your company. First is under the under construction phase and the second is useful life. The balance sheet should disclose the different phases in which the assets are therefore it is necessary to manage the asset as a separate object or asset master record during the construction phase. The activity that records the change from phase 1 to phase 2 is called the capitalization of assets under construction. So if the building is under the construction phase, that means it is in the phase 1. As the building gets completed and it is ready for the usage and it can be used for the organization purposes, at that point it will move from phase 1 to the phase 2 which is known as the capitalization of AUC asset. So the asset under construction can be managed in the system in two different ways depending upon the type of functions that you need. The AUC asset can be either a normal asset record or a master record with line item management. Before an asset can be settled to the final asset, a distribution rule has to be assigned to the asset master record. The transfer from AUC to the final fixed asset can be held in two ways. So you can transfer the final value of the AUC asset in two ways to the final asset. One is summary transfer from a normal asset master record to the receiver asset and the second is line item settlement of an asset. So under the line item settlement we transfer all those line items to the final asset with the help of a distribution rule and that is what we will be following in this particular step that is a statement rule for AUC asset that means we will be defining a settlement rule so that the line items can be transferred or can be settled to the final asset. So for doing that before when we want to transfer the AUC asset to the final asset, we first need to create a final asset master to which 
the AUC building value will get transferred to. So to for that we need to create a new asset number. So that particular asset will be from which asset class has to be decided. Depending upon the AUC asset, the final asset class will be decided. So the AUC asset in our scenario supposes CWIP building. That means when the building constructed and is ready for the usage, it should go for the asset class building. So we'll create the asset under the head, the asset class building. So we can select the asset class from over here in the screen and we can click on to this display all items enter so now we can move over here and we can select our own asset class that is building over here and we can click on to the enter and now I can select over here the description. Suppose I select the description as building. CA. And then we can move to the next is the time dependent. Over here you can put the business area. And then the next we can move on to the depreciation area and we can define the depreciation over here. And you can also define the useful life on the screen at the side. So I have taken the depreciation key as PM10 that is 10% depreciation will be imposed on the building and the useful life will be suppose is 20 years of the building. So this is how we have created the asset master. Now we can move and we can save this screen. So you can see your asset number has been created that is 125 times 03. So you must remember that this is the asset in which we will be making the settlement of the final AUC asset. So now moving to the next transaction we were discussing about is settling a rule or defining a distribution rule in the SAP system. So we'll execute the transaction that is AIAB enter. So you can see on the screen now that the AUC, the company code you have to take over here and then you have to select the asset over here. Now the asset over here will be the asset number to be settled. To be settled means typically this will be an asset under construction part of asset. So the asset which I want to transfer, I want to settle to a final asset, that particular asset has to be taken up over here. So we can go for search that particular asset. So this will be a part of AUC asset. So I will be taking the AUC asset from over here that is CWIP building. So I have selected that. So once you have taken the company code and the asset over here, now you can move on to enter the screen over here or you can enter on the screen as well. So once you enter on the screen, it takes you to the next the next you can do is you can execute on the screen as well. So after entering the screen you can execute the screen over here and now it will take you to the next screen. So you can see over here that it shows you the line item list. We are going for a line item settlement that is why it will show you all the line items. So they are as of now there are two line items even if you want you can cross check with the asset explorer AW01N enter. So the asset over here has, you can see over here has two line items, one of $40,000, another of $50,000. As a whole, it makes of $90,000 of CWIP building. So we can move over here now. And so in case you want to settle both the line items, you can select both the line item with the control on the keyboard. So both the line item has been selected. Now if I want to settle this, first I need to, once I have selected this both the line item, I need to go to this enter distribution rule over here. Now one thing has to be clear with you that 
you can settle the whole asset as a whole as a hundred percent to the final asset or if you want you can even settle one of the line item of it as well so suppose I want only the one of the line item to be settled suppose I want the second line item to be settled with the final asset I want the first line item is still to be there because the part is still under construction so I can take this second line item and I can move to this clear option over here enter distribution rule and click on to this so once I click it takes you to the next screen over here you need to put the description so in description you can write it over here as settlement rule for building and you can decide the settlement profile so you can select the settlement profile also so from over here you can select the settlement profile the settlement profile over here will be settlement asset under construction you cannot take any of them you need to take which is relevant so you need to select the AI that is asset under settlement sorry settlement asset under construction so that is what I have selected as a profile over here the next you need to take is the asset value date so the asset value date which I would be taking is August 31st 2014 so once I have taken this now I can move on to enter okay you can go over here overview so once you click on to the overview it takes you again to a next page or next screen now this is an important screen to understand over here this is the asset for which we are defining the settlement rule so first over here in the category part you need to select from the selection options that is FXA has to be selected as an asset and then second column settlement receiver so settlement receiver basically means the asset in which the value will be received so over here we'll be taking the asset we just defined or created where the value will finally go to or will be transferred to and the asset which we just created was building CA so we can double click on it and we can take that particular asset over here and now we can put over here as hundred percent enter so you can see over here the detail the category related to his asset and the settlement receiver over here is so we have taken the category then the settlement receiver basically means the final asset to which the value will get transferred to and then the percentage that means how much percentage value you want to transfer from the AUC asset line item so I want the whole line item to be transferred as a hundred percent so once you have done this now we can move to so now we can move back with the back option once so once we move back now you can see over here the second line item which we selected for the settlement rule has turned from red to green if you take care of that so once you do you can take care that this particular line item will change from red to green that means the line item has been defined with the settlement rule so once that has been done now we can save the screen <coughs> sorry we can move and we can save the screen over here so you can see the message is generated that the distribution rule is saved so this was just we have created the distribution rule so that the settlement can go so the distribution rule is that hundred percent of this particular line item that is the second line item will be settled with the final asset that we have taken up in the receiver part so once we have defined this particular distribution rule that is what we are we are done with the settlement rule over here now we'll move to the next step that is AUC settlement 
so under the AUC settlement now we will be doing the settlement of the asset finally so this AUC settlement functionality is an asset can be once the distribution rule has been defined that particular asset can be settled over here so we'll we'll settle this asset over here with the line item settlement as the rule has already been defined so we'll move to the screen on the SAP with the transaction AIBU enter so once we enter the screen over here now we need to select the company code over here and then the asset over here so the asset which we will be transferring will be taken up over here so this is the number which the asset AUC number which will be transferred so over here we'll be selecting the AUC asset whose settlement has to be done with the final asset so we have selected this asset over here now now we'll be selecting the document date so I'm transferring or making the settlement of the asset on August 8 sorry 31st of August so that is what I have taken up and if you want you can take the text over here as CWIP building capitalized you can take the document type that is a B in this in the assignment part you can fill certain detail if you want to want fill it anything so suppose I am putting it up over here as 100% settlement and in reference if you want to give anything you can give that as well so once I have filled all the details over here now I can I can run this in a test run part so as to check that there should not be any kind of an error in it so we can move on after this to this simulate option over here which you can see over on this particular header over here on the part so we'll simulate over here click on to the simulate so it says you the allocation profile not maintained yet so to come out with this particular error we have not assigned the allocation profile yet with the company code so we need to assign the allocation profile so we need to go to the transaction O A A Z enter so you can see on the screen the heading change view FIAA settlement profile so we here in the company code 1010 for which we are executing the AUC settlement we have not yet assigned the profile to the company code so we need to assign the profile we need to go to this field over here and we can select the options and out of that we can assign the profile so you can see over here AI that is settlement asset under construction so this is the profile which you have to select and this is a standard SAP defined profile provided so now we can move on and we can save this screen and the profile will be saved over here so once the profile has been saved now we can move up again to the screen and now we can go for a simulate the entry so now even there, though the error is there because it does happen that when you get the error and you have done the changes you need to go back and have to execute the transaction again so we have to execute the transaction now again so I would be going to AIBU enter so again you need to take the company code asset number over here the document date I would be taking up is August 31st and the asset value and the posting date will also be same we'll be taking the text over here the document type will be AA that is asset accounting you can take the assignment over here now we can execute this in the test run part so for ex for looking after to this as a test run part we need to go to the simulate option over here so you can see the simulate entry the entry has been simulated to you and this is the preview of the entry which will be done so you can see this AUC asset has been decreased by fifty thousand dollars that is the 75 posting key means credit the custom asset and 70 means debit asset so the value gets transferred from the AUC asset to the main asset so this is just a preview of it if you want this to be to be done 
So in that case, we need to go back. So you, over here, you just need to check the entry and you have to check that the debit and the credit is equal to zero. And then we can move back to the main part again. So this was the screen. Now when we have checked with the test run, so now we'll take this test run off. And then we can move to this execute option over here. So once you execute this, you will see that the document will get posted. So you can see on the screen, the document number have been generated over here and the entry has also been generated over here on the screen to you. So this is how your settlement takes place. So on the top over here, you can see the asset number is reflected to you. This was CWIP, which got transferred. And this particular asset got transferred to this asset that is building CA with the transaction type 346 and the asset over here is $50,000. So this is how the AUC settlement takes place in the SAP system. And now if you want, you can move back and check the asset explorer so as to have a look at the values of these both the assets. So first let's move and check the first asset that is CWIP. So we can move over here to the CWIP and we can refresh this option over here and you will change that it is right now is 90,000 and over here these are the two transactions. Once we refresh these values get will get changed. So once I have refreshed this now you can see over here so you can see now that the value has moved from $90,000 to $40,000 why? Because the third line item has been created, that is the asset has been transferred. Or you can say the, A the AUC settlement have taken place. So this 345 transaction type is retirement transfer of current year acquisition AUC line item. So this is line item settlement for current year acquisitions. Similarly, if you want to check with the second asset, the asset which we, we transfer to, over here is this and this is this receiver over here so you can even check with this particular asset as well so the second asset over here is this one so you can see in this also that the value have been updated thus now on 8th august 31st 2014 and over here now the value has been updated on the screen as well so this is how you would be doing your asset under construction part. So this is how we are we are done with the AUC process. And this is a very important and very interesting process in the asset accounting part. So that is it till for this particular session. In the next training session, we'll be looking for the asset accounting year end and period end activities and some of the very important reports which are needed in any of the organizations you are with. So since then, till then, thank you.